I'm Mike Engelhardt. I want to show you the operation of a new circuit simulation package from Corvo called QSpice. When you first install QSpice, you'll have a desktop icon that looks like this. When you launch it, it will show you a blank schematic and a symbol browser to the left. All the keys are keyboard shortcuts. Q gives you a transistor. Um, K, uh, uh, M gives you a MOSFET, C gives you a capacitor, and so on. But before we get into that, when you open QSpice for the very first time, what I want you to do is just immediately run some simulations. And you can find those under File, Open Demo. There's a crystal ladder filter. There's an audio amplifier from um, Do-It-Yourself Audio. Uh, here's a switchboard power supply. Let's start with that one. So this is implemented with standard SPICE devices, plus these special functions, which are native elements in QSPICE. Let's run the simulation. The converter itself is a resonantly switched, synchronously rectified buck operating discontinuous inductor current mode. And you can see that it, um, it also, uh, um, uh, you can phase lock its oscillator to an external source. You can see here the phase lock acquire, uh, the oscillator acquire phase lock. And um, this thing simulated five milliseconds of a 100 kilohertz switcher in less than one third of a second. QSpice is fast. Now, let's um, look at an, uh, some more examples here. Uh, for example, this one will show you how to extract the Bode plot of a switcher. When people okay, Bode plot is simply simply means looking at complex data and polar coordinates. But when people talk about Bode plots for power supplies, what they're talking about is the open loop transfer function viewed in the frequency domain as a way of understanding the stability of the feedback loop. Bode plots were critical in the days of voltage mode controllers, but Today in current mode controllers, they're 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 not so important. In fact, they uh, they may be more of a distraction than a uh, than actually useful. But people like them. QSpice supports them, and so here's the Bode plot. You can put cursors on here, right? Slide them around, and these cursor labels are editable. That means that if I if I want to know where zero dB is, I can put zero there, and that's the crossover frequency, and that's the phase margin. One more example that's worth looking at, particularly worth looking at in the uh, demos are the practical switch mode power supply uh, because it shows uh, various modeling and simulation techniques. So this symbol is a schematic, right click, enter schematic, and that's the insides of the model. This device here is actually written in C and you can look at the C source code, C interface, that's the C code to that. It'll give you a practical example of how to, how to write switchboard power supply models, and you can simulate this circuit. Okay, you see it's also it's exceedingly quick. Okay, now let's start from scratch and, and draw, a, um, draw a circuit from scratch. So when you launch it, you have the blank schematic. To the left is the symbol browser. Symbol browser is visible or not with F2 key. F3 is the um, symbol attribute. F4 is the console underneath when you're running um, uh, simulations. Okay, so R gives me a resistor. Control R rotates. C gives me a capacitor. And V gives me a voltage source. G gives me a ground. If I call, if I press G multiple times, I get different ground symbols. Some people like this ground symbol, and that is used a lot in academia. But I don't use this symbol because at instrumentation companies it gets frowned upon. If you use a symbol, if you draw it uh, in an instrumentation company, people will likely giggle and think that you took your circuit outside and connected it to a stake stuck in the dirt because that means earth ground. All right, so W gives you wire draw mode. Let's draw some wires. Good. Now, this is one place where QSpice is going to take a little getting used to, and it's GUI, because it is a much more modern GUI than one generally finds in CAD tools. For example, there are very few dialogues. 
if I want to edit this capacitor, it's common to have some dialogue open up and then you have to move your eyes away from what you're editing, enter information in the dialogue, close it and continue that for every single component on the screen. That is um, kind of old school. And this one is different. You just click on what you want to edit and everything is edited in place. Uh, for the, um, the dialogues can be useful for something like a, uh, a voltage source because the dialogue can help you compose the syntax. But this actually has a, te a, a technique which I think is a little bit better. It gives you a hint for the syntax underneath the area that you're typing. And as you type, it fills out the form underneath the thing. So one, mil, um, one mic, one mic, 0.5 M, one M. So that's going to be a, a square wave. And then, um, there's also no dialogue to help you compose a simulation command. But, you know, there's really only one simulation command, dot tran. Everything else in Spice is an analysis. And when you do enter dot tran, dot, okay, so the, keyword, the keyboard shortcut for entering a, com, uh, a, a text command is period, because all Spice commands start with a period. This editor is actually my mouse cursor. My mouse cursor actually is a little editor. And as I edit, it will help me um, uh, compose the syntax, which is pretty simple. There's only one number. How much time do you want to simulate? And now I'm ready to simulate the circuit. Right click, run. You turn it on by pushing the power button. And there is the input. Um, I did not. Oh, I forgot to. I missed a. I didn't read my own syntax hint. So there's the input square wave, and there's the output, and there, there we are. Okay. That's how you operate QSpice. Couple of things. Uh, okay. So for one, you can you can rotate things at non uh, ninety degree angles. So if you put a diode, right click orientation 45 degree increments you can uh, have it at 45 degree angles and these editors work um, at every different angle you can um, uh, uh, um, the, the the in place editing works no matter what angle you're you're typing at uh, well, oh, there's um, the selection guides are pretty good. If you put a MOSFET selection guide, uh, you can say what gate voltage you want to measure RDS on because um, uh, the simulator knows that um, uh, knows the device equations. So you can say what voltage you want to uh, uh, what gate voltage you want to use. You can um, document a component that isn't stuffed. Right click, do not stuff. It will show you a ghost of the component. Or you can say stuff it with a jumper. It will be stuffed with a jumper. Uh, you can put images on the schematic. For example, if you go right click, paste bitmap to clipboard, view, uh, control V. There's the bitmap on the clipboard. Now, you might not want the black background. You have two choices there. You can go to the uh, waveform viewer and say edit background color and change it to, you know, um, a different color. Or you can change the raster operation used to combine the bitmap with the uh, schematic. So fill color, raster op. Let's make it um, source invert. Okay. So that is... Um, uh, that's basically, you know, how you operate QSpice. It's, um, it is a much more modern GUI than you usually find in CAD tools. It uh, should be a big leap forward in usability. Uh, there are other videos that show how to um, uh, write models in C and Verilog. There's a video on how to import third-party models. But uh, that's basically all I wanted to cover in this initial look here. So I, uh, I hope that you find it QSpice useful. And if you have a problem, you have a remedy. If you go over here and look at help about, there is a support email address. And if you just want to complain to me, 
you can contact me at mikeenglehart at corvo.com. Thank you very much.